Apple Podcasts. All right, we have some football news. It's not good. Cardinals All-Pro corner Patrick Peterson suspended by the NFL for six games for violating the league's PED policy. Peterson apologized in a statement he made last night at a charity event. He'll be eligible to return week seven. On that week, the Cardinals will travel east to take on the Giants. I want to get a quick comment on that from my friend Damian Woody, who jumps in with us here. What was your reaction when you first heard that? Arizona's looking for a new start there, D. Wood, and now they get this before training camp even begins. Well, I was shocked, Greeny, because you're talking about one of the, one of the blue-chip prospects in the National Football League, in my opinion, the best cornerback in Patrick Peterson. And any time you see a player get popped for six games, it makes you raise an eyebrow because not only is it in violation of, you know, a banned substance, but it's also a masking agent. So, you know, it's, it's unfortunate for Pat, Patrick Peterson for all the work that he's put in as a player in this league. And it's also unfortunate for the Arizona Cardinals, who's trying to get this thing turned around. Absolutely. This is about as bad a way to get the new era started as you could possibly have. I did want to ask you about one other thing while I have you here this morning. And anyone who follows Damian Woody on social media <laughs> knows that you remain, while well, you played for a lot of different teams, you remain in your heart a New York Jet. What was your reaction to the crazy news out of the Jets the other day as they fired their general manager, Mike McCagnin, on May 15th? Well, Greeny, I was cutting my grass. You know, that was very, that's very therapeutic for me. And then when I got the alert, I mean, I was stunned like everyone else because, you know, this whole offseason, the Jets have, you know, been quietly going about their business, accumulating talent. And here it is. I'm thinking, wow, the, the other team in town is, is looking like the clown show. And here the Jets, do, you know, going about their business the right way. And then this news drops. So, you know, listen, it was unfortunate. And um, just talking with other people, this, this actually happens uh, in the, at this time of year. But I think Christopher Johnson is, is, a, is a novice at being the owner. He's still learning on the job. And, and clearly this was, a, this was a power play by Adam Gase. Yeah, and I guess it just does beg the question because, yes, we've seen circumstances like this before. But Adam Gase is a guy who was let go in Miami because he wasn't winning football games. And somehow he has managed to win a Game of Thronesian kind of power play where he is now running the New York Jets all right. by himself. That's a very strange set of circumstances, is it not? A absolutely. I think he's the only he's the only person that has the official title of coach and general manager in the National Football League. And this is a guy that went to the playoffs his first year and uh, didn't his last two years in Miami. So it's a strange set of circumstances going on with the New York Jets. But at the end of the day, if Adam Gates goes out here and wins his first year, all will be forgotten. Absolutely. All right, D. Wood, always good to see you. Have a great weekend. We'll check in again soon. Laura, let's get back to some hoops. Yeah, let's do it. And we just heard Charles Barkley talking about how he thinks it's great that Zion Williamson could be going to the New Orleans Pelicans. But what we really haven't seen yet is how this affects Anthony Davis's relationship with New Orleans. Coach Alvin Gentry did take some time to answer this question at the Combine. Hear what he said right now. I think people keep forgetting he is on our <laughs> roster. He is a roster player for us. And, you know, he's under contract until January 1st, 2020. So uh, all, I think what we got to do is that we've got to look at a situation where uh, we're building something special there. And I think uh, most people will want to be a part of that. And, and, and I tell everyone, he's a, he's a very good kid. He's a very good kid and, and, a, and, a, and a great basketball player. So, Jay, Will, you have a relationship with AD's camp. Are they swayed by Zion at all to stay in New Orleans? Well, yeah, sources tell me that, you know, just due to Zion Williams coming to New Orleans, that still changed nothing on their part. Hmm. I still think they feel exactly the same way. Look, AD's made it known, their camp has made it known that they want to be in a different market. You heard a lot of trade speculation about the Lakers. Uh, I still think that is on their mind as they're moving through this process. Zion Williamson is a great talent, but Anthony Davis is trying to win a championship. Anthony Davis is trying to get more visibility, and I don't know if he gets that in New Orleans. Yeah, one of the things that Alvin Gentry did say in the rest of that interview is just talking about how they really do think that they could be competitive with Zion and obviously Anthony Davis and the other players on that team. Anthony Davis knows that Zion's a great teammate. None of this matters for him at all. He still wants to get out of there. I, look, I'm not saying this for me. From their team, from their perspective, Zion Williams is a, is a tremendous player. Drew Holiday is a big-time player. 
Uh, they're still in the West. The West is still loaded. Think about teams like Denver. Think about Golden State, what we're seeing. Think about Portland. I still think it takes a lot for this team to come out of the West. And if you're Anthony Davis, if you want to win, there's only so much time I have left to play in this league at 27, 28 years old. You know, I don't know if I want to be patient for another three, four, five years with Zion as opposed to maybe getting traded to the Lakers, maybe getting traded to Boston, maybe getting traded to the New York Knicks or another team where I could potentially win faster. Yeah, Alvin Gentry, of course, made a point to say Anthony Davis, great kid. We all still like him. He said that if AD did decide to stay there, that the crowd, the fans would still welcome him back with open arms. Do you think that on the AD side, if you're just guessing, does he feel like that relationship, though, is still so fractured that it's not even worth going back either way? Well, I think there's always a chance. I think with David Griffin coming in, he can obviously maneuver that relationship. But at the same time, it's vice versa as well. It works on the same way as well. I think, you know, just because you have to compartmentalize the love you have for a city as opposed to the love you have for yourself and what you want to do in your career, those are two separate things. And I think AD is able to separate those two things. He still has love for the big NO. Uh, I still think that's a place that he has a ton of love for. But at the same time, like AD wants to go accomplish what he wants to go and accomplish, and he's trying to do that. Yeah, Greeny, Matt Barnes has a take on this as well, so we'll send it back over to you guys. Yeah, Matt, I just wanted to pick your brain on this before we get to some other matters, because we've talked about it in our meeting this morning. Do you think that Anthony Davis should be swayed one way or another by New Orleans winning the lottery? Um, obviously, like, you know, to reiterate what Jay said, Zion is a tremendous talent, but it doesn't put them over the hump, so to speak. And he's given his heart and soul to New Orleans for, you know, a handful of years, and he feels like it's best for him to move on. Um, I love when players take their career their future in their own hands. Um, so it's just a situation where, to me, his mind is made up. And so much of basketball is mental. If you're mentally checked out before the season starts, you really want that kind of cloud looming over this new Zion era. So if he wants out, I think New Orleans need to do their best job to get him out before the season starts. I agree. I think they need to get him out as quickly as they possibly can. And one of the places he will most likely wind up is the Lakers. And, of course, they had... What can only be described as a tumultuous past year. Despite signing LeBron James, they missed the playoffs for the sixth consecutive time. It's the first time LeBron had missed the playoffs since his second year in the league. And then, as you will recall, on the final day of the regular season, team president Magic Johnson abruptly resigned after just two years on the job. He said he was happier when he wasn't in that role. There's been any number of reasons given for why he may have wanted to get out. Soon after the season ended, then Luke Walton was fired as head coach. Then they thought they wanted Ty Lue. That went bad. Monty Williams, that went badly, so they hire Frank Vogel to be their new head coach. And then they get some good news on Tuesday. They move up all the way to number four in the draft. 11 had been their previously slotted spot. Our projections have them taking Vanderbilt guard Darius Garland in that spot should they stay there. But it all of a sudden becomes a more interesting bargaining chip to try and trade for Anthony Davis. So Matt is just one who obviously you make your home there. You know mm -hmm. it inside and out and played so recently. What is your perspective on all that we see going on with the Lakers right now? I think, you know, for the, for the storm and for the sun to come out, management has to be stable. I think everything starts at the top. And, and it's been a mess the last six years. You know, they have the worst winning percentage in the NBA in the last six years. Um, as a lifelong Laker fan, I want to see nothing more for them to get back and be relevant. Um, so management has to clean themselves up. We don't really know who's in charge, who's making the calls. As long as they know, that's what's important. I don't think we need to know, but as long as they know, um, they pick their, their coach. But to me, do, does a big time free agent really want to jump into that hot water knowing it's a mess? Well, and I think that's, that's the big point, right, is, okay, so you've got LeBron James, and everybody in L.A. got all excited last year and was like, okay, we're going to be back in the playoffs. The injury might have derailed the season and kept them out of the playoffs. But to me, it's more about that management position and what is your vision for what this roster looks like. After they signed LeBron James last year, the rest of the guys that they signed, everybody in L.A. was like, this doesn't fit. This doesn't work. How is this going to be successful? And at the end of the day, it wasn't successful. And then you couple that with essentially taking all your young, talented assets and, and announcing mm -hmm. that you're basically trying to move them. And then they're like... Whatever. I thought Jay Will's point the other day was great. I don't know where Jay Will is in the studio, but I thought it was great when he said they sent Kyle Kuzma to the draft lottery. Knowing he could be traded. And he might be traded <laughs> to get to New Orleans to get Anthony Davis to Los Angeles. Right. I mean, this right. is just how dysfunctional this L.A. franchise has become. The more stable franchise in L.A. right now is the Clippers. No question. It is so dysfunctional that we sometimes overlook the fact that Magic Johnson, who is basketball royalty, just stepped down from his position on the last day of the season without telling anyone he was going to do it. And we live in a place now in a time where the Lakers are so crazy and dysfunctional that that almost gets glossed over. That's one of the craziest things that's happened in the sport in a really long time. What do you make of that? I think Magic was just tired. You know what I mean? There's a lot of 
behind the back talking and blind CCs and a lot of stuff going on where Magic looked at the situation like, I feel like I'm helping you guys and, and I don't really need, you need me more than I need you. And he was just tired of it, you know? So he was tired of taking all the heat and not re being allowed to do what he wanted to do. So he just walked away to me. I think it was an emotional move. I understand the move, but I think if you're going to make that move, at least have the respect to talk to LeBron because I think he was integral in bringing LeBron to L.A. Okay, so let me just give you a scenario. The Lakers wind up trading Kuzma, Ball, the fourth pick in the draft for Anthony Davis. So you got LeBron, you got Anthony Davis, and whatever else they can figure out to put around him. It's not enough. It's not. Can that team not compete? It's, Absolutely. Well, the team they have this year can, can they be competing. Can they win? win at, forget about that. LeBron's not about making, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the six right, seed. Exactly. Can, can they, were they, are they a championship no. contender in the no. West? No. With Frank Vogel and those two star players, it's not enough in the West. Do you agree? Uh, I do agree. And given the current state of this organization, I have zero confidence that they will win an NBA championship while LeBron James is on the Lakers roster. Yeah, I think that's a real question. I don't know. It'll be interesting. If, if KD does leave Golden State, it opens things up a lot in that Western Conference. And if you have... A motivated LeBron James and Anthony Davis together. That's a pretty dangerous combination to start with. All right, Sports Center comes your way tonight, 6 Eastern after PTI with Sage and Kevin. Stephen A. will be live with his take on Raptors Bucks game two. Tigers' second round at Beth Page will be complete by then. And after today's heavyweight weigh in, we could be in for a wild night tomorrow night. All that and more, Sports Center after PTI on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Diving up in our second hour this morning, the Warriors pull off a great escape in game two. Now they may be looking at a longer stretch without KD. What's it all mean? We've got answers. Get up on ESPN.